What's up everybody, Renfail here, and it is time for me to do an early thoughts video around Fallout 4. Which, I know for some people, is mind-boggling because they're like, How is it possible that you've never played Fallout 4? And the easy answer to that is because I was too busy um, traveling and doing other stuff when this game came out, which was 2015. So 2015, um, I was in Spain. And then we got back from Spain, and I started working for TripAdvisor and Oyster. Chris and I started the Airbnb in Cancun. A um, bunch of other stuff was going on in 2015. I think 2015 was the first or the second year of work on the MMORPG. So I was just busy when Fallout 4 came out. And as a result, I never got a chance to play it. So I know a lot of people have just been like, how is it possible that you've come back after all this time and you missed it? It's like, well, it's here now, and I'm enjoying it. So obviously, I got ramped up for this game after the Fallout show. Like many people, I'm riding that high of Fallout, and I need my fix. So I've got Fallout 76 and Fallout 4 installed here on my Xbox. I'm currently going through Fallout 4. I'm also doing a Fallout 76 dabbling series, doing some stuff there. I'll have a video coming up soon talking about sort of the similarities between these, you know, Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. Things I like between the two, things I think one game does better than the other, so on and so forth. Um, and at some point, I have never played Fallout New Vegas either. Um, which means I need to, at some point, roll around to doing that. That was 2010, which also would have been when I was uh, on my way out of uh, Bulgaria and heading to Mexico. So again, just traveling and working and everything else. So I was just busy when these games came out. But I think I might save the uh, playthrough of New Vegas until we're getting ahead and ready to go into the second season of the show. Because the ending shot of that show, spoiler warning... You know, you've had your warning. Uh, the New Vegas shot as they're descending, as, as Hank is descending in the desert, confirmed that that's where we're going for season two. So I think going back and playing New Vegas at some point ahead of the next season of Fallout is, will be on my agenda, but it's not going to be something I do this year. Right now, I'm only going to be focusing on Fallout 4 and then dabbling in 76 a bit from time to time. So I've been rolling around and, and kind of looking at things here. Um, I think one of the things I love right out of the gate. If I can get my chair moved over here. I'm out of the way. When I came into Diamond City for the first time um, today, I think it was during the stream this morning, I immediately was like, I was like, junk town! But then also just looking at this and going, oh my god, this place looks absolutely amazing. And this is one of many places that you can get to in Fallout, uh, Fallout 4. So the map itself is pretty big. Let me move this window over here to the side so I can better look at things here. As you can see, we are down in here and the map is pretty big. We've explored a lot of the places up to the north section yet. Uh, not over to the east though and down here there's a lot left unexplored on the southern parts of the map. Um, so we got quite a bit to go there but we've been helping this guy um, he's a detective. He's a synth detective. Where did he run off to? Um, I think we have a quest to go over to him. And that's one of the things I want to talk about really quick is the, um, there he is. I just saw him running down the streets. He's heading to his office. We're going to go catch up with him. Um, the questing in this game, if you've ever played a Bethesda game, and, and this is something someone was saying during the live stream this morning when I was doing 76, they were like, it's amazing that 76 is like having a peak right now on the Steam page. It's like the most people that have ever played it because of the show. And it's like we were discussing how so many people have forgot that Bethesda does make really good games. And the, the Fallout games are really good. But I think a lot of people have this vitriol inside of them for imagined offenses that Bethesda has done to them over the years. Some personal things. And I just don't get it because they're just video games, right? I know that when I first started this, uh, I bought the Xbox Series X Game of the Year Edition. I just bought it 2024, like right before I did this, right? Right before I started this this playthrough like a week ago. The first session that I played, it bugged out Codsworth, and I had to start over from scratch because he wouldn't talk to me, and I went found a Reddit thread where other people were suffering the same thing, and as a, as a result, I had to do the first you know hour of gameplay over again. A Bethesda quirk, as I would call it, a bug in a 10-year-old game, right? 
plus 10 year old plus game and for some people that would be enough to be like that's it bethesda sucks i'm never playing these games ever again but i i recognize that all games have flaws and for me i like bethesda i've loved the elder scrolls game i like elder scrolls online i liked starfield um i don't have anything against them and fallout 4 has been a very pleasurable experience so far the dog the fact that you can put glasses on the dog and a bandana and he can carry things is just amazing the aesthetics are great it looks pretty good even for a game that's got some age behind it we obviously are getting a update on the 25th for ultra wide support on pcs and next gen consoles hang on oh god it's really you well listen to this here hard to mistake this mug for anyone else you keep laughing at death someday death's gonna laugh back not as long as I got a few friends to back me up. You saved Nick, this agency, and my job. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, happy to do it. Yeah? Go diving into scary pre-war ruins all the time then, do you? Here, I know an amount wasn't on the table when you went out to find him, but you deserve a reward. Plus a little something extra. You know, if you're looking for work and don't mind putting on the detective hat, Nick sure could use a new partner. New quest line. One case at a time, Ellie. Our new friend needs our help first. All right, let's get down to business. Take a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Now, all of this is flawless. We've got a quest system that works. We've got a fun Fallout-based UI, um, good voiceovers, good writing. And overall, we're having a lot of fun progressing the quest lines. But I, here's, the, here's the thing I would say about this game. Like, we're already um, getting some jank right there. I was stuck in the environment right there. The strength of this game, I think, is not necessarily in just the single-player RPG that is here. When I hear people talk about Fallout 4 and why they love it so much, it's not just the game, it's the outposts and the mods. I think the modding in particular is something that has allowed players to go from just putting in 60 to 150 hours of a playthrough, depending on how completionist they're going to go, to putting in thousands of hours of gameplay because of the fact that you can mod this game and do all these crazy things with it. And people have spent the last 10 plus years doing exactly that. The outpost building is interesting. I, I don't know that it's something that is for everyone. Um, I will do it to the point where it's required by quests, but I'm not someone who wants to go out of my way to build something truly you know, magnificent, as some people will. And when I compare directly this game to Fallout 76, I much prefer the way that Fallout 76 does things like the breakdown of weapons and armor and gear and the camp system there and the housing system there. Um, there's a lot of quality of life stuff that 76 does, which I'll talk about in a future video that Fallout 4 does not do. And because this is an older game, you definitely can feel the age in some areas where it's related to like quality of life features and just the overall look and feel of the game. Now again, I'm playing a modless no mod, out of the box, Xbox Series X playthrough. Um, I will be uh, uh, um, updating this on the 25th when that next gen update comes out, which I believe is for the, I'm on the Series X, so it's going to be like uh, 60 frames per second upgrade and the new quest related to the Enclave. So, you know, I'll see how I can go from all that. But the, the other thing that Fallout is really good with is if you, Fallout 4, is the fact that you have the option to just do whatever you want. And for those of you who watched the stream the other day, we went and helped the um, Brotherhood go track down. Um, and we did something over here. I forget what it was called. Um, it was this base, right, essentially. We went in here and we had to deal with this, like, giant queen. Oh, no, that's the restaurant. Hang on. Look at the wrong place. Hang on. Where, where did we go? Oh, it was the castle. Yeah, we took back the castle. I was looking at the wrong place. I, it, it took me two and a half hours to take back the castle because I was severely under leveled and I went through like everything all my ammo all my throwables all my food severely under leveled but I still was able to get it done and and everybody was just like that's crazy you know that's you're so under leveled for this place but I think that's the beauty of this is that as you run around and find all of these quests you'll notice that there's no level mismention on any of these it's just you you have to go there and find out is it too difficult for you or not and so if you want to follow the main quest I feel like that's probably gonna 
keep you on a sort of the right leveling track. But with the opportunity to go off and do all these other things in all these other places, it truly does give you the freedom to just go out here and like wander around the wasteland. So before I, I come back here and talk to him, because obviously that's you know the next quest that we have here, um, we can go out here into the wastelands. Can I fast travel from in here? I kind of wanted to go back to my main the sanctuary and show people what that looks like. Ah, you can't fast, fast travel here. Let's step outside really quick. Because they've done a very good job of the of the wasteland here feeling like, you know, a wasteland. Um, let's go up. Sanctuary, the original vault. Oh, I need that rifle right there for sure. So we go from Diamond City to this, you know, wasteland looking place where I was living outside of Vault 111. And then from here you could just go exploring the wastelands. And there's some truly amazing panoramic vistas in this game as you get out here and exploring the wilderness. I probably won't be able to see anything right away just from here. But it's a big, 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 big map. And there's so much to do. Like, I've just been bypassing things. Like, I haven't done any like the radio towers or any of those things yet let's see if i can get up over here on top of this water tower and see if there's a view we can take a look at um because i do want to you know briefly mention the size and scope of this game which is very impressive in terms of the landscape that you're playing through i don't think i can go up there actually i don't see a ladder um yeah can i get in probably not all right. Well, maybe I can get a better view just at least from up here. Maybe. <laughs> it's not going to want to let me jump up there. Puppet dog. Well, it's kind of hard to see from here, but we've got a ton of, of territory to cover and places we can go. And it's a big, 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 big place. So let me see if I can't get... Let's go up here to the satellite station. Look at that. Murloc King, Chameleon Deathclaw, Sentry Bot, lots of monsters to see. Uh oh, we're actually going to get attacked here. Let's go into my vats. So obviously we've got the vat system, which if you're familiar with from other games, lets you specifically target body parts on mobs for crit damage and stuff. Did we get him? We're good. All right. Now, the reason I want to come over here is I think, if I remember correctly, I think we can climb up here to get a better view. Nothing there now. <gasps> Who's here? This gives you a chance to check out the combat system, too. Oh, he's right here. Alright. quick commercial break everyone to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time really appreciate the support all you got to do is join as a member you get access to private videos you can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see and beyond that don't forget we're multi-streaming over on twitch now so you can support over there as well thanks so much to everybody let's get back to the video at hand <laughs> one shot, one kill. And the brilliance of the the way that they do the ultra violence in this game mixed with the dark comedy. Like if you're familiar with Bethesda games, that sort of stuff is, is in most of the games. But in Fallout, it's a little bit more than it is in some of their other titles. Hang on, I gotta find where this guy is at. Because, holy crap, something just happened down below. They may have taken care of themselves. Can I go up any higher, or is this as high as I can get? Well, as you can see, it goes off in a lot of different directions. There's plenty of places to see. Where Lots of go? ultra... Oh, man. Where is he at? No, it's not there. Let's go down here. We gotta take care of this guy before I can continue talking about my early thoughts on this on this game. Is he in here in this building? There you are, you little bastard. There he is. Let's go for headshots. Ooh. 
workshops, which we'll happily use from there, and probably some ammo over here and some other stuff from here. Um, this is the one thing I will say that I, I, I had forgotten about this particular, because I hadn't played Fallout 76 for a while, and Starfield was kind of the same way, but not quite as as tricky. Um, you have to take the time to explore places like this because ammo and all the things that you're going to break down to create your mods and the things that make you more powerful and your weapons and everything else and all your outpost upgrades and all those other things, it all comes from exploration. So you're going to get caps and XP from doing quests and you'll get some gear from those as well. But for the most part, you have to always remember to be looting everything. And this is a game where you take, you know, you have to take your time and go through. Now, one thing I will say, um, now that we're past all of that and I'm kind of in a safe place here, the one thing I will readily admit that this game is really good at, and I'm not going to be fully experiencing it in that way because of my schedule. Um, Fallout 4 is a game that is best played when you can do a completionist playthrough. So for someone like me who's only going to go through and do the main storyline with a little bit of the sides, you're probably going to see a 40, you know, 35 to 40 hour playthrough is what I'm anticipating because I'm not trying to do a completionist run. I just really want to see the main story for the playthrough that I'm doing right now. With the Game of the Year edition, it means I have access to everything and over time, as I have more time, I can dive in and do side quests and fully explore the realm that's been presented to me. And that's something where I know there's been quite a bit of commentary in some of my videos about how um, some people feel that I'm not going to be able to do justice to the game by not giving it a 250 or 500 hour playthrough because I'm only going to be doing a 30 to 40 hour playthrough, you know, where Starfield was 350 hours as an example. Um, the difference here is that Fallout 4 is not a new game, therefore it's not going to demand all the attention that a newer game would on my channel for the purpose of views and everything else. But it's hot traffic right now because of the show, and I'm enjoying it and I'm having fun doing it, with doing it, but I have no desire to spend the next 500 hours in this game because that's not what my channel is. I'm not a one-track channel. I do, I'm a variety channel, so I do lots of different things. So what I am enjoying is the lore, the aesthetic, the fun of vats, the leveling system, the the core of what Fallout is, if you remember, war, war never changes, Ron Perlman's voice going back to the first game, playing those first three games and really enjoying those. I played the first couple two or three times over the years, um, not as much as Baldur's Gate for sure, um, but I did enjoy those, and i got to wrap this up because I need to go help Chris with the cat, it looks like, so... Um, I would say that if you're someone who enjoys big, 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 big games, that's one of the strengths of this game. Um, it also has a great single player storyline, which is what I'm mostly focused on, where we're just sort of going through the main core and side quests that we find along the way that are sort of in our area. Um, but having that flexibility of knowing that there's a world there, if you're someone who has the time and the inclination to spend 500 hours here going into outposts and doing the mods and getting into thousands of hours and everything else. Um, but I think that's the beauty of this game is between the outposts and the multiple quests that you can do and the various endings that there are and the different ways that you can choose to play if you're going with the mods and all the other stuff. I think that's one of the reasons that this game is kind of like the, the Skyrim of the Fallout world in the sense that it's like the favorite one that everyone always wants to come back to and is happy to continue to buy new editions of because it really is just that good of a game. And at the end of the day, that's what I always come back to. Bethesda makes good games. They might have hits and misses, but at the end of the day, they do make good games, everybody. So I'm having fun with Fallout 4. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Fallout 4. I'm sure most of you have played it, but these are my early thoughts. I will be continuing to play this game over the next few weeks as we go through and complete the single-player storyline. And if you want to catch me on Fallout 76, don't forget to check those streams as well. There's a playlist down below daily here and on Twitch. Don't forget the Patreon and the Discord, and I'll see everybody in the next one. Stay safe and happy gaming.